Welcome to Arkansas Wildlife. You know, the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission has one of the largest state-owned fish hatchery systems in the entire country. And this week, we're gonna look at the centerpiece of that hatchery system, the Joe Hogan State Fish Hatchery near Lone Oak. We're the flagship facility for catfish in the state of Arkansas. So all the catfish that are, that are spawned are spawned at Joe Hogan State Fish Hatcheries. They've been growing various species of fish at the Lone Oak Hatchery for decades now, but they've become most famous for producing catfish. And this week, we're gonna take a look at exactly how the hatchery crews produce millions of catfish every year for the enjoyment of Arkansas anglers. First up this week, school may be about to end for most Arkansas students, but education never ends for the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission. We're gonna take a look at the many education programs that the Game and Fish offers to connect Arkansans with the great outdoors. All that, and this week's winner of a free hunting and fishing license, right after this break. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day, Academy. Arkansas Game and Fish Commission, we're all about conservation. You probably knew we did this. And this. 6.6. .6. And even this. Uh, 10 for one, all these 10, I think. But now more than ever, we're also using education to reach citizens of all ages. The Game and Fish Commission offers all sorts of programs to connect Arkansans with the natural state and foster conservation of our fish and wildlife resources for generations to come. You might even call it education on the wild side. I've been coaching since the very beginning of this program in two different cities, and I've really seen how much of a difference the Arkansas Youth Shooting Sports Program has made in our kids' lives on and off the trap field. I'm Hunter Throckmorton from Bonnov, and my teammates are the state finals of the 2016 state championship. But I'm just one of more than 50,000 students who have taken part in sanctioned trap shooting events through the program. In fact, it's the largest state shooting sports program in the whole country. The Arkansas National Archery in the Schools program reaches even more students. More than a thousand Arkansas students from 4th through 12th grade shoot in a state championship in Hot Springs each year. But that's just a drop in the bucket compared to nearly 60,000 students from hundreds of schools who take part through PE classes. I had a, a student uh, write me a card and just said, Mr. Couch, thank you for starting this at Akron. I was one that didn't have uh, a lot of friends, wasn't involved in stuff, and, and these have become my friends. I'm involved in this, I'm loving it. It is making a difference in my life. And I get a lot of stories like that from kids that, you know, hey, we finally found something, a niche for us to fit in, and, and this, is, this is what we want to do. We've been teaching hunter and boating education for a long time, and it's still one of our agency's most important ways to reach young Arkansans. More than 16,000 Arkansans earn the Hunter's Education Card every year. These classes are not only making our great outdoors safer, but they are also turning out a new generation of ethical, responsible hunters, just like me. The Game and Fish Commission is also making the state's waterways safer with its boating education program which produces nearly 7,000 graduates a year. The Game and Fish Commission's flagship firing range near Mayflower is currently undergoing major renovations that will allow it to serve even more Arkansans. We have several other ranges around the state, and we're working with cities right now to provide additional shooting opportunities for the public. There we go, here's a better one. The 
the Game and Fish Commission issued more than half a million fishing licenses last year. We'd like to see fishing poles in the hands of even more Arkansans. Our mobile aquariums were on the road 155 days last year. We saw over 600,000 Arkansans. They got a chance to be face to face with these fish. You never know when one of these encounters will hook the next lifelong angler. This spring we'll be introducing the Fishing in the Natural State program, or FINS for short. This program will bring fishing into the classroom and encourage fishing as a healthy lifestyle that can last for a lifetime. Don't tell the students, but FINS programs also align with state curriculums in subjects such as math, science, and even language. The Game and Fish Commission still reaches students the old-fashioned way, in the classroom. We offer many professional development opportunities for teachers, and with their help, we're teaching today's students to be tomorrow's partners in conservation. One of my favorite aspects about the Arkansas Game and Fish programs is that it brings what my students are learning about into the classroom. So you're bringing the outside in. My students love working with the Junior Duck Stamp Competition and not only do they get to express their artistic creativity and increase their talent, but they get to learn about Arkansas waterfowl and their habitats. Those are ducks. Arkansas Game of Fish has eight regional education coordinators around our state and sometimes they get to come to my classroom and that makes me so excited and the students so excited. Even though they're only in my room for 45 minutes, the impact that they make is for a lifetime. We love going to the schools, but sometimes the schools prefer coming to us. Game and Fish operates nature centers in Fort Smith, Jonesboro, Pine Bluff, and Little Rock, and education centers in Yellville, Ponca, Columbus, and Casco. Together, the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission Nature and Education Centers hosted nearly a quarter of a million visitors last year alone. We presented more than 2,600 public programs, 2,000 school programs, and 45 teacher workshops. Unfortunately, we don't have a count for the number of memories that have been made. It isn't spelled out in our mission statement, but the Game and Fish Commission is all about the business of making memories. Whether it's a youngster's first fish or a pair of mallards over the decoys, nature's mystery surrounds us and calls us to connect. These education programs are helping our Kansans answer that call every day. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by Arkansas's own PK Grills, maker of the new PK360, the best and last grill you'll ever buy. Arkansas has one of the largest state-owned fish hatchery systems in the nation, and the Game and Fish Commission's Joe Hogan Hatchery at Lone Oak has been growing fish almost as long as the commission has existed. It's really interesting when you, when you go back and look at the history of the agency and see where this hatchery came into being. It was very early in the history of the agency. The agency was starting, what, 1915, and in 1927, those early commissioners were already looking for a central location to create what they termed the world's largest fish hatchery. They purchased the land in 1928. Um, 276 acres is what they purchased. Um, when the uh, construction was completed sometime in the 1950s, I believe there was 214 acres of ponds and uh, 57 ponds total. So it took them a long time to get that construction completed. They really didn't have any equipment when they started. They had uh, a lot of guys with shovels and and wagons and mules and dirt slips and, and they just picked at it for many, many years. But when it was completed in the 1950s, it basically looked the, the same from the 1950s until now, so almost 50, 60 years. Uh, the configuration of the hatchery really hasn't changed up until recently. Early Game and Fish employees carved the hatchery out of an existing rice farm and immediately started raising sport fish. So in 1929, they had largemouth bass and crappie 
that they had collected from the White River, brought those in and put those in those first 16 ponds and were able to harvest uh, those ponds in 1929. So there's been fish harvested from Joe Hogan and Stott since uh, 1929. Although methods and techniques have changed over the decades, the Joe Hogan hatchery has consistently produced fish for the enjoyment of Arkansans. These days, the hatchery turns out several million fish each year. In 2016, we're around 1.7, 1.8 million fish uh, that was cultured uh, and stocked. Uh, however, we do a lot of a lot of fish for other facilities that doesn't really fall into that same category. So we may culture five, six, seven million fish, and a lot of those may go to other facilities for uh, for further grow out. So annually, we produce around six million fish and may stock anywhere from one and a half to two million of those in public waters. Aquaculture techniques have improved since the early days of the Joe Hogan hatchery, but one thing that hasn't changed is the labor-intensive nature of the fish business. It is a lot, and, and I will say this, when I first started it was, it was overwhelming a lot more so than it is now, uh, but I'm surrounded by a pretty good group of guys and everybody knows their role and everybody knows their job and, and, and they're eager to come to work and they enjoy what we're doing here and, and they can see a tangible product going out that's providing opportunities for people uh, to, to harvest. And I think that is, uh, I think that's part of the reason that, that we've got guys that come to work eager to do this every day. So it's, uh, it's, easier, it's easier for me when you've got a crew of guys that's, that's uh, eager to come to work every day and, and get after it. So I'm, um, I'm fortunate to have the crew that I've got. Coming up after the break, we'll show you exactly how Game and Fish staff at the Joe Hogan Hatchery grow catfish for the enjoyment of Arkansas anglers. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by Zimmerman Sports Center on South University in Little Rock. Joe Hogan State Fish Hatchery grows several species of fish, but the Lone Oak facility is most well known for growing whisker fish. We're the flagship facility for catfish in the state of Arkansas, so all the catfish that are, that are spawned are spawned at Joe Hogan State Fish Hatchery. So we do all the channel catfish and blues and flatheads here, and then we'll, we'll ship those fryer fingerlings to other hatcheries for further grow out. But we've got a pretty large crew here. Um, and it takes the majority of us to be able to get around one of these eight, nine, ten acre ponds and harvest those ponds. And, and you don't want to do it uh, with a short crew or, or, or not be efficient at what you're doing because it's a lot of, a lot of time and energy uh, devoted to try and get those ponds out. And if you don't do it effectively and you only catch a small percentage of what you need, then you may have to do it again. So if we're, if we're going to get out there and, and harvest, then we need to be able to catch as much as we can. So we've got a lot of guys out there on tractors pulling the seines and trying to keep our lines down so we can get most fish caught that we can in one, one drag. We get started sometime around the second week of May with blue catfish. We spawn those first. So we have to get in here and, and, and get in with the fish, obviously. And, and sometimes when you're like harvesting blue catfish for, for spawning, you know, there's no other way to do that other than to, to, to pair up those 50, 60 pound blues and get them in a sack and you just have to manhandle them and get them in there and then carry them across the levees. There's just no really easy way to do it. We'll pair the blue catfish up in our spawning cages and, and give them a big, large spawning container to get in a 55 gallon drum. And then we do the same process for channel catfish where we provide them with a spawning container. Uh, that's a little bit later in the year. They're usually around the end of May until about mid-June. 
uh, when water temperatures get above 75 degrees. They'll spawn in the containers and then we'll bring the eggs back to our facility and we'll hatch the eggs inside. With the notable exception of these antique milk cans, the catfish spawn in the ponds the same way they do in the wild, with females laying thousands of eggs and males fertilizing the mass. But nature gets a helping hand when hatchery workers move the eggs into the hatchery's spawning shed. The controlled environment inside the building yields a higher percentage of hatched eggs. The crew takes a weight of the spawn to determine the number of individual eggs, and then it's into the spawning vats, where gently circulating water bathes the eggs in the oxygen needed for proper incubation. It takes about a week for the eggs to hatch. At this stage, they're called egg sac fry. The young fish feed on their egg sacs for a few days before their mouths are fully formed. At that point, they can be moved to round tanks and started on a diet of processed feed. Altogether, the indoor part of the spawning process takes from 12 to 14 days. We'll hatch the eggs inside, culture the, the, the fry to a size that's suitable for stocking, and then we'll move them out to our ponds for, for further grow out. The intended purpose of the catfish determines the amount of time they spend in hatchery ponds. Some are moved to nursery ponds or other hatcheries to be grown to certain sizes. Others spend more time here before being loaded onto trucks for stocking in Arkansas lakes and streams. But over their first year of life, they frequently change addresses as hatchery workers carry out the demanding work of catfish culture. It's a year-long process, uh, even though the spawning season is really short it's only you know a month month and a half or so and then we're done but you're constantly moving fish around uh, to get to those other stages that you're trying to culture to so you're you're moving fish uh, you're, you're changing densities in ponds to reach a certain stocking size and then on top of that there's the constant feeding and managing those ponds and aerating those ponds and checking oxygen at night so there's a lot that goes into catfish culture a lot of research and, and science that's gone into catfish culture over the last 10 or 15 years just so producers could become more efficient uh, and, and be more cost efficient and, and, and get more bang for their buck. And a lot of that has trickled down to us as well. So we've, we've tried to become more efficient in what we do. We'll probably produce um, around 2 million catfish fry, both blues and channels, and well, that includes flatheads as well. But as far as what we stock out into public waters, uh, from this facility, it's um, probably about 200,000 uh, catfish are stocked out into, into public waters, and most of those are a food-sized fish or an, an eight-inch fish or what we call a yearling fish for, for some of the bigger lakes. Regardless of where the fish end up, they wouldn't be there without the dedication of these Game and Fish employees at the Joe Hogan Hatchery. I think these guys are really uh, excited about what they do here. So uh, for them to go out and, and, and harvest a, a catchable size catfish pond is a lot of work, but at the same time, they know that they're providing angling opportunities for somebody in a, in a put and take type fishery. So I really think that that's, that's part of their motivation. They, um, they're really good at what they do. They're, they're, they're a good bunch of guys that can, that can get in here and get after it. The end result is a fish truck full of catfish traveling Arkansas roadways en route to a waterway near you. This won't be the smoothest transition, but we're gonna go from whiskers to antlers. In fact, very big antlers, elk antlers. We wanna remind you that May is the time to apply for one of the highly coveted public land elk hunting permits. The annual Arkansas elk hunt takes place in the fall, but now is the time to submit your application for the hunt. You know, elk were returned to Arkansas in the early 1980s, and in 1998, the Game and Fish Commission initiated the very first modern Arkansas elk hunt. And this year marks the 20th anniversary of the annual elk hunt. Each year, several thousand Arkansans register for one of the public land elk hunt permits on state and federal lands along the Buffalo National River. 
on the last full weekend in June, we'll draw the winners from a huge squirrel cage at the annual Buffalo River Elk Festival in downtown Jasper. Applying is easy. Just go to agfc.com and click on the elk application picture on the home page. You'll be directed to the new online licensing system where you'll enter your information and submit a $5 application fee. Registration is open until May 31st. Now you're gonna need a hunting license to take part in the elk hunt, even to apply, so here's how you can win one each week on Arkansas Wildlife. Arkansas Wildlife presents the Watch and Win Giveaway. During each episode of Arkansas Wildlife, we'll give away an Arkansas resident hunting and fishing license, a $35.50 value provided by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Visit the Arkansas Wildlife webpage at agfc.com slash Arkansas Wildlife TV and click on the Watch and Win icon to enter. This week's winner is Jim Pollard from Bradford. Congratulations and thanks for watching.